when did you realize the Watergate story was something different? When did you realize that, Carl? I think both Bob Woodward and myself realized that even the first day after the break-in, Bob was at the uh, courthouse covering the arraignment of the burglars, and one of them said he worked for the CIA, and Bob said, holy sh**. <laughs> you can see that scene right. in the movie of all the president's men were reading the book. Uh, meanwhile, I was in the office and I started calling the homes uh, and wives of the Watergate burglars who were from Florida. Most of them were Cuban Americans. And some of the wives started telling me about their husband's six uh, CIA connections. So initially, our feeling was that this might really, this break in and burglary with Five men are arrested wearing rubber gloves and uh, business suits and sequential $100 bills in their pockets. That this might go to the CIA somehow, not to, to the Nixon White House. But within a few days, it became evident to us that somehow this pointed toward the Nixon White House and the election committee. Well, at, at some point, are we going to? Uh, people have obviously seen the film and have read the book, uh, but at, at, at some point, um, was there uh, a breaking point where, you know, where you felt that this could ruin your career, if not also break a story that, that you were on thin ice on this yes. front? Yes, we made a mistake. And, you know, it, it, people ask all the time, were we afraid for our lives? And there, there were some moments when we got some threats that weren't quite so veiled. Uh, but really, what were we afraid of? We were afraid of making a mistake because the, the future of the paper, uh, if we made a bad mistake, that, that the paper itself could suffer grievously and maybe irretrievably because the White House had made our conduct, Woodward, myself, Ben Bradley, the great editor of the Washington Post, they made our conduct in Watergate the issue instead of the conduct of the president and his men. And we made a mistake. It turned out it was a mistake of attribution. We had said that, that somebody had testified uh, a set of facts before the grand jury when in fact uh, the person had not testified to those facts before the grand jury. The facts that we reported were right, but that little sliver there about the grand jury was wrong. And on that day, uh, the, the uh, White House pounced on us once again because they, they realized that we had made a real mistake. The only one we made is, I think, in two years of covering the Watergate story. But we, we were afraid we were going to have to quit, uh, quit the paper. But quickly we found out what the mistake was said in the paper what it was, that it was an error of attribution, not of substance, that indeed it was about a secret fund that had paid for the bugging at Watergate and other undercover activities uh, by the, the Nixon White House. And uh, the substance of it was correct, and we moved on from there. If there was a cable network back in 1970, Carl, that would uh, be able to give out uh, Nixon talking points and why something like this was okay, do you think you would have been able to do your reporting and Nixon would be out? Do you think that would happen? Yeah, I think we would have been able to do the reporting. Look, I, I think this is what's interesting about about my book, Chasing History of uh, the Kid in the Newsroom, because everything I know about reporting, about journalism, I really learned that this apprenticeship that I had at, at the greatest afternoon paper in America, and the essence of what I learned is what you see in Watergate, what you see in all the president's men, the kind of reporting we did. You don't get the stories by sitting in the office. You go out, you knock on people's doors, you go to source after source after source, you try to, to nail down not just a set of disparate facts, but context. In context, it's, you know, Woodward and I use the phrase, uh, and we've used it for 50 years now, you know, we're the best of friends, we talk a couple times a week, and, and the phrase we started using was the best obtainable version of the truth. And it's a, it's a variation of what I had learned at the star. And that there we called it the, the, co the complexity of the truth. And, and this is not a simple business. The simple part is, is the exercise, is the perseverance, is the going nonstop to get the story. But, but the hard part 
uh, is, is really putting all together what it means. And, you know, there's a line in this book that I learned is covering civil rights because the Washington that I grew up in was a Jim Crow town. I went to segregated public schools, legally segregated in the capital of the United States. And a lot of my time at the Star bracketed the Civil War by exactly 100 years later. But what I learned, especially covering civil rights, was the truth is not neutral. The best obtainable version of the truth is not about neutrality. It's not about putting 50% of the story on one side and 50% on the other. When you get to the best obtainable version of the truth, you're deciding what is news. And so let's take your, your veiled example there when you were talking about a certain <laughs> kind of, of network or whatever. It's not the best obtainable version of the truth, what you see on Fox. It's ideologically driven. It's totally one-sided. It's not neutral, but it's also not news because they haven't done the work of the reporting. They have no interest in reporting. So you can see a straight line from what's in this book, this kid with the best seat in the country, covering civil rights, covering Jack Kennedy's inauguration in my first days at the paper. City editor said, go to the inaugural parade and go to Fourth and Pennsylvania Avenue, cover the crowd, call in. Uh, what you see, don't be fancy about it, don't try to write anything, give it to a rewrite man. I had this amazing uh, opportunity. Who could imagine a 16-year-old kid? And then I covered Kennedy's press conferences, or I went to them. Uh, I covered his assassination. I covered civil rights. I covered plane crashes, terrible events. And so it's all about this apprenticeship. So by the time of Watergate, and Woodward likes to tell the story because he was new in, in the business at the time, but, but I'd never seen a reporter quite like Woodward and his, his instincts and his drive. But at the same time, as Woodward says, hey, he, he had this experience of 12 years' experience at the time of Watergate. We were 28 and 29 years old, but I had 12 years' experience. And so the methodology that we used in Watergate is really what you see in this book about my apprenticeship at the Star, which was a better paper than the Washington Post was at the time I was there. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.